Praise the Lord, welcome to Life in the Word. My name is Minister Manuel Rene Jr. Have to my left. Minister Vazette. Praise the Lord as you come in. Please like, yes. share, and subscribe share it, to Life share in the Word. It. Happy Wednesday to you. Yes. Pray your day is blessed so far. We pray God is doing great things for yes. you today. Amen. We've been talking about serving God in still right. Yes. Come We've on. Been in the book of First Timothy, chapter one, and we left last left off verse four. Uh, well, verse three. It says, "As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus." When I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Yes. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do. So Paul here is telling Timothy, encouraging him to stay in Ephesus mm -hmm. because there was much confrontation and much dispute in Ephesus about what was being taught. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. so we understand in that time there were false teachers that was deviating some believers, yeah, believers, believers, de deviating from the gospel mm. that had been taught by <laughs> that had been taught mm. by Timothy or Paul, but they were adding some other things, um, and other things that were false and that would lead uh, the church of Ephesus into error, right? Uh, they were um, not edifying or building up. Mm -hmm. Right, their faith, but bringing much argument. That's good. That was unnecessary mm -hmm. in church. You know, you know how disputes is. Yeah. You have you have your opinion. You have another man's opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's how it is sometimes. It's never what God said. Yeah, that's it's good. What, it's what men, men only fight over what they think. Come on, you help. But you so can't much. fight over what God said. Yes. You, they ain't no argument at that mm -hmm. point. God said what he said. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> his word is his word. Yes, it is. That's it. Can't but it's only men that. that's on the, on the corner <laughs> fighting about, oh, no, I think this, and I think this is what it means. No, what did God say? <laughs> don't add and don't subtract. Yes. And don't, yes. No, this is where the disputing, this is where the argument comes, this is where the fighting mm -hmm. comes, and that was happening in the church of Ephesus. Right? So Paul, Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, stay where he is. Yes. Be encouraged to stay where you are. Don't always run, but God sometimes calls you to confront. I like that. God will call you to confront. And that's where his leading, mm. his counsel will come in yes. to confront. Because guess what? These things can get you upset. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine you're doing the assignment of God it and you got still. all these other things that's um, challenging you and contradicting what you're saying? And you have to, you know, teach even though the people are not accepting the message, yeah. accepting what God is saying. The questioning is what you're saying from the Bible. Mm -hmm. No, this is why your resource and your so your only source should be from the Bible. Yeah, this is good. Because therefore, because they're going to they gonna question. Uh -huh. And trust me, these people, they know how to get the believer in trap. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They know how to get you in trap. And this is why you got to be... In your word, know your word. Uh -huh. You're able to bring up, hey, this is what it says in Psalm. Uh -huh. This is what it says in Matthew. This is, good. This this is what it says good. in Luke. This is what Jesus said uh -huh. when you're speaking to the Pharisees. Uh -huh. See, you're able to bring up, when you get more familiar, you get confident uh -huh. and you get powerful with God is using you mightily as he was in, with Timothy. But here, the point is, is that he's saying to charge them not to teach no other doctrine. So Timothy was to confront and to tell uh, those false teachers. I was there not to teach any false doctrine. Yes. Right? He said not to give heed to fables and genealogies, but to edify. And that's another point I want to make is the godly edifying. Yes. Right? Amen. Is that we should be built up, not being torn down. Come on. That's good. If you're being torn down, mm -hmm. you have to question if that's Something God. Something is wrong, yeah. God word comes to, to edify, mm -hmm. to exhort. Yes, it mm -hmm. does. Come on. It don't come to tear down. No, it don't. You leave church and you arguing to make you get home. <laughs> you arguing about the word instead of giving God glory what, what the word said on yes, that Sunday. Yes, yes. This is good though. Right? Mm -hmm. But I want you to say something. This is good because you say the things that people really go and do. Yeah. Who is not um ground is reality and it's real. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be if you know the word says something, you don't care what the people take. Yes. You know, I had a little, and we as believers who really believe God, we get, we got to, God want to teach us how to control our yes. emotions when it comes to Jesus. Because right. we could snap when it comes to mm -hmm. Jesus, when you sold out for God, the little thing people say, well, the enemy will try to get you to snap to come out character. 
Yes. You know, like the other day I was in a, in a lunchroom and the other table across from me, they were talking about people in, about, about pastors. And I just, I just was there and I was just reading some. They were like, oh, all pastors are so bad. They, all they want is the money and the little bit. And the mouth that came out from it was like, right. two people who really come to me, you know, for prayer. And then the person who was talking was like, one, like a person who was trying, the devil was trying to use to discourage them. Yes. And one of the girls didn't know nothing. So she was like, for real, you're like that? And asked, when I looked across there, I see he watched me like this. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, go in self, embrace or say nothing. Yeah. Because I felt myself raising up because you're talking about God's people. You understand? So mm -hmm. I had to learn that you just ignore, ignore them. And then two weeks after, guess what happened? Something happened with him and he's like, Carl, I need prayer. I said, but didn't you just say? <laughs> about pastors and whatever and he looked at me like this i said i was listening i said no because i didn't say nothing that means i wasn't listening i said because when you come to pastors and believers that's my sisters and brothers in christ the word says and i showed him what the word said don't talk mm -hmm. about and he looked at me he said carl i'm sorry but i need you to talk. and i looked and i still you know i still do what i have to do but the person who was with him looked at him like wait you was just talking and then you Mm -hmm. So from that, it changed your mind. So now when they see them, they're like, Carla, what happened Sunday? Because the enemy put people there for us to come out of character. Mm -hmm. Because it's not wrong getting mad. Mm -hmm. And when somebody come against the world or come against what God believes. Yeah. But then the enemy try to trick you. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I understand how Timothy felt too. You know, with all these different doctrines, what they're taking out and doing their own thing. Right. He felt like what he was doing, you understand, wasn't working. But then he believed God and he needed somebody to push him to do the work. Right. And then right. some people will make you feel like you're not doing the work and nothing is moving, but it was moving. Right. Because Paul was put there to push him further. Yes. Yes. For him to do the work, to shut it down. Correct. And we can't be scared as Christians to shut things down. Yes. Because if we believe in God, we believe in God. Some of the things that are going on in the world, like transgender, with a, with a man taking over, the woman should be mad. Because guess what? They're trying to take over what we, you understand, God yes. created us for. There's nothing wrong with, with saying something about it. Right. There's nothing wrong with standing up for God. What did God's word says? And as you say, everybody's not going to like you and everybody's not going to agree with you. But guess what? You have to stand for God. Yes, you do. You have to um, understand that is the, you know, the teaching is not building your faith. Then it's turning it yes, down. Yes, it is. You know, a lot of us, we hear things and it, you have to say, am I grown from this? Yes. Am I being edified? Am I is my faith getting increasing and not decreasing? Yes. You know, and that's this is why clearly it goes so to good. about what is it what is it going towards? Like all the disputing, all the arguments. Yes. What is it doing? Mm -hmm. That's what we have to you know make our you know analysis of what is it doing for me? For yourself. What yes. am I doing? Did I leave? Questionable about certain things. That's good. Did I leave more confused? Uh -huh. Did I leave doubtful? Uh -huh. Did I leave not knowing what this man was saying when yeah. he was talking? You know, this is reality. you know, this is where because a lot of us are confused. Like this is reality. How do I know if something's in error, and this how do I know if something is God? Yes. Mm. Did it be, did it build your faith? Yes, this is reality. Come did it build stuff. your faith? Come on, because it clearly stuff. says what Paul is saying: godly edifying, which is in Faith, faith, not in confusion. Come on. Not in doubt, not in error, but in faith. This is the when you teach, when someone teaches, I have to leave more faithful. I have yes. to leave more empowered in Come serving on. God. So you know it's God. I have to be more ex become exhorted because now I understand what God was saying. Yes. I understand the message. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to be careful about not paying attention. Yeah. To things that's not unedifying. Come on, come on. Mm. This is good. Unedifying. Anytime the word of God goes forth, you must be edified. Yes, you have to. You must be edified. You'll be better. You, a growth must yes. come in your mind. Your spirit must say, oh my God, I saw this before, but now I got the clear view of it. Yeah. The feeling of God teaching you, push you further to know more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you can see when you, you finally got the analysis of it and you're like, okay, let me go search it more. It gives you a joy yes. and a satisfaction for you to grow more. A joy and a satisfaction to dig more, to know God more. But as you say, you cannot leave confused. If you leave confused, I'm not knowing. Yes. That's why I don't, I, I, I have 
have nothing against my brothers and sisters, but some of the preachers out there, you all be using big words and people be confused. Mm -hmm. You cannot confuse the people with the big words because they leave church confused like, what was this word what he was trying to say? You got to make things plain as the, as plain as the Bible said. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Don't use a big philosophy word that you... It's just simple. Yeah. And people leave church, don't know it's not because you want to use so much big words. They're more confused and they're like, why should I go to church? I don't understand what the pastor is saying. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you have to make it simple and you got to make people leave happy to come back mm -hmm. with their learning growth. You understand? As you said, you can't miss the word because you're checking your own self to see. You, you understand? What you need to fix. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you could, and repetition is works. Because you could hear a pastor preaching on one, the same word, the next Sunday, the same word, and changing it around, and then you get, you, growth always happens when you leave God's word. When you love God's word and you want a change, as you said, you grow. Mm -hmm. Your mindset grow, mm -hmm. you, you gain in God's word grow, the way you want to speak to God, your prayer life, everything grows. Mm -hmm. But if you leave confused, you're just confusing the people. Right. And they're not growing nowhere. The same thing is happening over and over again, as you said. Some people, are, they go into the wrong place to listen to the word. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to just, there's nothing wrong with vocabulary, right? If uh -huh. you know vocabulary and you know more words than somebody else, I don't think you should dilute it. Meaning that uh, if you don't know certain words, maybe uh -huh. you should educate yourself on certain <laughs> words. Because teaching is about edifying, but it also is about empowering because... If you use word, if I use a word you don't know, uh -huh. it is the is the teacher to bring forth revelation of that word. Okay. So that you can have more understanding of yes. it. But I should not be withholding a word because I'm more maybe uh, more experienced in vocabulary in uh -huh. this area. Uh -huh. So if I know a word that you don't, don't mean I shouldn't use it. Yeah. I should be able to be a teacher that uses this word, and but also brings understanding yes. to you. So I just want to touch that yeah, point yeah. because it makes it feel like, oh yeah, maybe I shouldn't use big words. No, no use big words, but, the but the rightly divide the word, bring yes. understanding to word to bring understanding to the teaching yes. or to the sermon. That's all. Yeah. But really, that's not what we're talking about. We're more talking about the edifying and the building of your faith. How do you get built up? That's how you get built up. To test wrong doctrine. Now, yes. It's not just only words. Yes. It's the doctrine, the meaning of the message. Yes. What is the message that's being taught? taught. That's what we must yes. be able to detect. That's what edifying does. Are you able to detect wrong, wrong message? Doctrine. Wrong doctrine, See wrong teaching. Right, but it goes back to, like you said, some false teachers use these big words yes. to decorate and to bring confusion, but this is why you have to have right teachers. Yes, the right, right one. Right, you know, teachers that know the word. Yes. That's not going to bring confusion. Yes. Not going to make you, bring, you know, bring question yes. about what you're listening to, mm -hmm. but you say, hey, you know what? I hear God in this. Yes. I hear God in this. At least God is speaking yes. To, yes. to me in this. I felt transformed uh -huh. in this. This made me more prayerful. Yes. Because he talked about prayer. You didn't yes. talk about praying and you talked about this and then yeah, you talked yes. about that. And you Confused me. No, yes. confusing. So this is the confrontation. Men ideas and uh -huh. different things what Timothy was dealing with in Ephesus. Right? He says, now the end of the commandment is charity. Right? Out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith. Unfeigned. And I want to look at that word unfeigned. It says, genuine and sincere. So what is he saying? Out of a pure heart. So when you teach, let it be from a pure heart. Genuine. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Let it be from pure heart. That's let good. it be from love. Yes. Mm -hmm. The message should always be from love. Yes. That's yeah. good. That's good. That's good. Not from hate. Yeah. Not organized to tear down. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's out there. Yes. Sometimes you're like, man, like, who? <laughs> who, who are they talking about? <laughs> It's true, though. I'm just saying, the message shouldn't be personalized to your yes, feelings or yes. to your to your to your own intellectual yes. uh, understanding. How yes. you no, it's to the teaching people. Love, yes. It's teaching love. It's always from love. It's not yes. to create. There's some things that God may want you to confront in a message or yeah. have a certain thing uh, taught in in your in your in your church uh -huh. or to that person. Uh -huh. But it's always from the foundation of love. Yes. Amen. Foundation of love. Always from the foundation I like of love. That. It's foundation never from hate. Love. Yes. Never from hate. Never yes. from, you know, me saying I hate you because you don't, we didn't agree. Yes. That's good. On 
on something about the word yes. of God. Love is because maybe it's something you didn't understand yes. about the word of God. So I can't just hate you because you didn't know. Yes. I should have hate you to begin no. with. But I should be able to have the love of God to take time and teach and show right. you something in the word maybe you never you never seen before. Yes. Never understood. Mm-hmm. And that takes love. That takes patience. That takes, as the Bible says here, pure heart charity. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we're going to close it off there. Amen. We pray the word bless you. We'll be back here on tomorrow. Amen. Thursday. Pray you enjoy the rest of your day. Please remember that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Minister Carla, Minister Renee, God bless you.